Thank you so much. I appreciate that. If you would take your Bible, please, and let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number two. Um, Luke and Jaron are out this week. We pray for them as they're out traveling and having some time away. Notice, um, if you would please, there. Uh, this is a continuation uh, from the message last week. And so I'm going to take probably five or ten minutes and just recap, and then we'll, we'll try to go ahead and uh, finish this message. But we want to go to Genesis chapter number two. And uh, the theme of this is a wonderful picture of the gospel, but it's extending from Adam and Eve and their relationship. I want you to notice Genesis 2, um, and let's go back to verse number 20, and I'll start reading there. Genesis 2 and 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found the help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would come and bless and help us with these truths today. In your name, amen. All right, let's go back through, if I might, uh, some of these truths that we have before us. Um, I want to show us three pictures and what we have from right here. I, I want us to understand that um, Adam and Eve and what's happening here in the beginning of the book of Genesis picture the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in a myriad of ways. So number one here, the picture of the gospel in this passage, this passage right here is a picture of Christ and his church to come. Okay? Picture of Christ in his church to come. Um, it is a picture of, of headship, yes. Uh, <clears throat> it's a picture of uh, the bride and the bridegroom, if you would. You'll notice that number one. Now, do you see two and three there? Two and three are birthed from number one. So from number one, we have a picture of the gospel, but now we have a prophecy of the gospel, and I've just realized I don't have my mic on. No wonder they're frantic in the back, my fault. All right. When I get up here, of course, I have nothing else on my mind. All right. How does that help? Is that on? Okay, 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 yeah, I can hear it. That's better. Okay. So from number one, we have two and three. And there are three pictures that relate to the gospel there. So number one, we have a picture of, of Christ in the church. We went over that, right? Adam and Eve. Number two, we have the prophecy of the gospel. The prophecy of the gospel. That's in chapter three. Read it, verse number 15. Chapter 3 and verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is a prophecy of the cross. Um, uh, we have this prophecy when say, stray Satan will strike the heel of Christ. When did that happen? Because the heel was a wound, but not a death wound. That would happen when he was on the cross. Christ would bruise or crush Satan's head. When would that happen? When he was on the cross. When Jesus died, he not only died there for our sin, but when he died there, 
He fulfilled the Old Testament Ten Commandments, the law, perfectly. Perfectly. So when we're in Christ, we're in Him and there's no condemnation, right? There's nothing. But the other thing He did when He was on the cross is He crushed or He finished the work of Satan. Well, when you crush a serpent's head, that's a death blow. So he would bruise his heel on the cross, but Jesus, what, would defeat Satan forever when he was on the cross, giving him a death blow. So in other words, his sentence is now written. We know that when we go to the book of Revelation, we see what's going to happen to him. It's done, right? He's a defeated foe. However, we still battle him, don't we? But we have this prophecy now. Here's the husband and wife relationship, a picture of Christ in the church. But we have this prophecy of the gospel, and it looks forward to the cross. Then we have one more. We have the provision of the gospel in chapter 3 and verse 21. Remember what the Bible says, 3 and 21. And unto Adam also... And do his wife. Oh, by the way, can I stop and say for anybody that says, well, they never really got married. Well, it's interesting that she is called his wife. Amen. Isn't that? And, and also unto Adam and to his wife did the Lord God make kins of, uh, coats of skins and clothe them. What do we have here? Well, we remember this fact. After God creates Adam and Eve, He creates them, He puts them in a perfect environment. They, they, they have mental capacity far past ours. They, 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 they do not have a sinful nature. They have a natural nature at that point. They have never sinned, but they choose to do so. They choose to go ahead and, and take that particular pleasure and that desire, and they do it over the relationship they have with God. They break God's heart. Can I put it that way? So, God now comes to them. He would have every right, every right to have killed them both. But He doesn't. Amen. Instead, He goes to innocent animals. He takes the life of the innocent animals, their blood, their blood is shed, and he actually takes the skins and clothes Adam and Eve. That is a picture, if you would, of the provision of the gospel. It looks forward to the Lamb of God, Jesus, who would come and be slain for us. And so they're covered with the blood. The blood of Christ in the New Testament removes our sin. They're covered with the skins of those animals. We are now covered with the righteousness of Christ. Okay? So, this wonderful picture here in the Old Testament uh, of the gospel that comes from Adam and Eve and looks forward to the headship, a picture of Adam. <clears throat> Uh, the groom and the bridegroom, uh, a picture of Christ in the church. Then a prophecy of the gospel. The prophecy looks forward to the cross. What? Well, where Satan will be ultimately defeated. Then we have provision for the gospel. What? The, 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 the innocent animals that have been slain looks forward to the lamb. Okay? All here in these first couple of chapters of Genesis. Now, we go a step further. We're going to get to the next slide here. Um, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm just going to highlight this and go on to get where we want to go, if, if you would. Um, if you'll go to chapter 2 now. Here's the creation of Adam and Eve, a type of Christ in the church. We have the symbol of the gospel from Adam and Eve. And notice it, please, underneath there. <clears throat> Adam and Eve... Um, teach our humanity. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, if you go to verse number 15 in chapter 2, <coughs> it says this, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Mankind needs to work. 
God established that. That's just an established rule. Okay? The next verse, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Down to verse 20, And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to all the fowl of the air. Number two, mankind needs opportunities. Opportunities. Notice number three. If we go, please. Now to verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest of it, thou shalt surely die. What did we discover last week? Mankind needs guidelines. Okay? Man needs to work. He has opportunities. But he also has to have guidelines. And then we found, verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. What? Mankind needs companionship. We need companionship. Um, companionship, um, certainly in a husband and wife relationship, but can I say just companionship in general? Um, um, there, there is a time all of us, I think, want to be alone. And, and we need that. We need alone time. But we really do better when we're rubbing shoulders with others that are like us. Okay, whether it's family or those at church or, or neighbors, uh, we want some kind of companionship. Um, it isn't too many people that, are, that decide, I want to live in a cabin in the middle of Alaska, 300 miles away from the closest Walmart. Okay, it isn't too much. We might think that, but actually snowmobiling for 15 hours to get where you want to go, eh, pro probably not. Okay. Uh, the other thing that, 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 that we find here then is he gave names to all the animals. It was up to him what he did. God says, listen, I'm going to leave this up to you. You do what you want. Well, what do we find there? That mankind needs to exercise a free will. All of those things take place here. We need that today. We need work. We need opportunities. We need guidelines. We need companionship. We exercise a free will. All of, the, all of those things take place. Okay? Now, let's take this a step further and let's go and pick up from our message last week. And that is this. Adam and Eve symbolize the gospel. Say, preacher, you've said that and said that. I know, but we're, we're finally here. Okay? And remember we said that they symbolize the gospel in several ways. We talked about this last week. Number one, that that relationship, number one, was a picture of sleep. And we talked about the importance of that and what it meant um, as we're, we're walking and, and living for the Lord, uh, a picture of, of sleep. Okay? Adam is a type of Christ, but he's a type of Christ in failure. Now notice, there's also a picture of wounding. And we talked about that, remember? Uh, the riven side, uh, the rib that was taken out of, of Adam's side, and we, we gave a correlation to that, and the side of Christ being pierced, right, and being wounded. He still has those wounds today. It was out of the side of Christ out of the side of Adam that the bone was taken, Eve was made. It is out of the work of Christ that the bride comes, that the church comes. And, and we, made, we made that correlation. We also talked about the wounding that took place and, and what it meant um, to be wounded uh, for someone else. Now let's go a step further. Number three, it's a picture of refinement. Refinement. Let's talk about that a little bit. If we go back to 2 7, 2 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, be very careful. And man became what? A living soul. It didn't say a body, it said a living soul. What? We're refinement here. We start with dirt or clay, and we end up 
uh, with the first man, Adam. What we, what we do, we get this backwards. We think we're a body that has a soul. That's not how the Bible describes this. We are a soul that has a body. Okay? Because when we die, the body is redone, the soul consists and continues to go forward. Okay? I am saying that the picture of Adam and Eve is a picture of refinement. Okay? Um, it says here that he formed man. That's different from when he said he made Eve. He formed man. That means to fashion and to shape, shape something. In other words, he used raw material. And some of your ladies are saying about your husband, he's still raw material. Okay? Uh, but he used raw material, if, if you would, to go ahead and fashion him. When we go to Eve, we find that the Bible says that <clears throat> he took the rib out of Adam's side and he made. It's a different word from the word formed. It has to do, in other words, he constructed or he built something. So, a picture of refinement. The man has been refined <clears throat> from the ground. He became a living soul that has a body. God now goes to that which has already been refined. He goes to Adam. He takes the bone of the Adam, of, of Adam, and he makes Eve. Adam has been refined from the clay. Eve has been refined from the body of Adam. Man is once refined from the earth. The woman is twice refined from the earth. Okay, why is that? Why is that important? Well, this twice refined woman, what as they are together, they, they begin to reproduce and they begin to do that through the woman. Go with me and keep your finger here to John 3 for a moment. John chapter number 3. <clears throat> We're talking about refinement. A picture of the gospel. Notice if you would, we'll start in verse number one because we know the passage. John 3, there was a man of the Pharisees, John 3, 1, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He was involved in the Sanhedrin. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus said unto him, he gets right to the point, because he knows why he's there. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Can I say to you, if you're here and you've never been born again, that's something that needs to happen in your life. Amen. A pastor can't do that. A priest can't do that for you. Baptism can't do that. You being a good person can't do that. You thinking that uh, you desiring, I believe in God, doesn't do that. Being born again means you need to have a new birth. Yes. You need to realize you're a sinner and come to Christ. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, Adam, if you would, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. You have the same picture here. Man has been refined once, if you would, a picture of the flesh, Eve twice, and he is saying, listen, the experience of just being born of the flesh is not once. You need refined again. Okay, you need to be born again. You need to be born of the Spirit. That's the exact picture that we have when we're back there and we see Adam and Eve. He, if you would, is pictured there, born once, Eve, uh, made once by God from the earth. Eve is twice refined. That's what we need. We need a salvation that comes to us and completely alters us. You know, there's a difference between a man and a woman. Have you noticed that? Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, that's why it really is gospel hindering when you want Adam to be with another Adam. 
No, 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 no. That's, that, that's impossible. That, that, that ruins the picture that God is giving to us. I'm saying that the gospel is a picture of refinement. You and I, when we're born again, can I put it this way, we're twice refined. Because of the salvation that God has given to each one of us. After our salvation, we are a new creature. Okay? In Christ. There's a new construction that has been made. Uh, that has completely changed us. The gospel refines us. So, if you're here, twofold truth. Number one, if you hear and you don't know Christ and you're lost, you need to be refined. You need the gospel of Jesus Christ to change you, just as surely as Eve was changed from Adam. Number two, it's a picture of refinement, Christian. That means that you ought to be continuing to grow. You shouldn't be where you are five years ago. You ought to be growing in your Christian life. Why? Because the gospel refines us. It changes us. It helps us to grow. When I read that passage again, I hope you'll never read it the same. And understand the picture of refinement is exactly a picture of what God wants to do in salvation and what He wants to do in our lives. Next, it's a picture of headship. As we go back there to Genesis 2, it's a picture of headship. We read in Ephesians 5, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Matthew Henry, um, years and years ago, of course, uh, penned this. I thought it was interesting. He said, the woman was made of a rib out of the side of Adam, not made out of his head to rule over him, nor out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, under his arm to be protected by him, near his heart to be beloved by him. Adam lost a rib without any hurt to his strength and his capacity, if you would. I'm saying we have a picture of, of headship. <clears throat> In other words, I realize under Christ I am under authority. But do you know <coughs> we don't serve a hard taskmaster. Amen. We serve a loving Savior. Does He have guidelines for our lives? Absolutely He does. But the headship that He has over each one of us, like a husband caring for his wife, should be that kind of loving, caring relationship. The gospel of Jesus Christ, by the way, elevates women. Amen. And the gospel of Jesus Christ reminds all of us, men are women, that men are women that know Jesus Christ as Savior, what? That we have a headship. That we have someone over us that wants to lead us, that wants uh, to guide us. There's a fellowship in this headship. But that headship is leadership. That headship brings recognition. That headship um, brings a following from each one of us. That headship brings a communing with the person of Christ. The gospel, can I put it this way, brings new leaderships to our lives. If you're lost here and you're hearing me, the fact is you need a champion in your life. You need someone to help you that you can go to that will help secure, give grace and strength and peace and somebody that's an anchor in your life. Adam and Eve, that picture there is a wonderful picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ in its headship. Next. It's a picture of identification. It's a picture of identification back in Genesis 2 and verse 23. And Adam 
said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. A picture of identification. Can I say to you that Eve is permanently tied to Adam? She's called woman because she's taken out. She is part of man, just as truly as we're called Christians because we are a part of him, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a new identification, don't we, as, as God's people. And that identification, if it's just exterior, if it's just an exterior, then it's not the identification that you need. See, the identification that Jesus Christ brings to each one of us, if you would, um, goes ahead and just consumes our whole person. Everything changes. When, when He brings the identification mark that He is mine, I am now living for Him. That means the change of heart, the change of mind, the change of emotion, change of direction, change of leadership, change of desires, change of eternity. Everything changes. I have a new identification. Um, when, when a man and woman get married and she takes the husband's name, she turns everything around. And she becomes part of that relationship. She is now identified with him. She bears the name that, that, that he carries. What? They're going to have the same purposes, the same goal. They are identified as Mr. and Mrs. They are identified, Lord willing, that they're living in the same house. All right? They're, 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 they're identified because in the last five years, they haven't been apart for five years. They've been together. They do things together. They have children together. They come to the house of God together. They work together. They have family together. What? The wife is identified with the husband and the husband with the wife. You hear me. Adam surely knew who Eve was and Eve knew who Adam was and, 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 and Eve realized she was out of Adam, right? And, and Adam realized that Eve is a part of her. So with our Lord Jesus, we are a part of him. You are in Christ. If you are in Christ, can I put it this way? You were made out of a bone of Christ's side. We're identified with Him, beloved, not with this world. We ought to be living differently. Praise God, we are His. Each one of us will receive a new name one day. Each one of us, what, are to be like him. We're to have the same goals, the same purposes. Can I put it this way? We're married. That's right. We ought to be doing what we're doing together. We, he wants his church built. He wants us involved. That's what he wants from each one of us. Can I say to you that you are somebody Adam lost his rib. Christ lost his life for us. Adam gave himself. Christ gave himself for each one of us. Lastly, it's a picture of the help meet in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. Can I say to you that it's not good for the soul to be alone? It's not good for you to be lost. You need Christ in your life. God didn't intend for you to go on without him. We need that help meet in our life. That word help meet corresponds to Adam. It means the one suitable for him, uh, the one partnered with him, the one like him. God states, I don't want him to be alone. Why? Because uh, man is a social creature. God created him for companionship. He was incomplete without Eve. He needs the help meet, if you want. One suitable for him. Why? They have a shared purpose as the husband and wife. They're important to one another. There is commitment here. Marriage holds the best environment for raising children. Marriage also holds one of the greatest challenges for sanctification. Hmm? 
Only one amen there. Marriage is a living symbol of Christ in the church. Marriage was not, con not for convenience, but it carried a purpose, a shared purpose. The communion that it brings, the closeness that it brings, if you would. Adam now had a spiritual partner to assist him, a companion to encourage. Um, you know, we work so diligently. We get older, well, what am I going to do for retirement? Is the house paid off? Well, what, what, what about the vehicles? Um, what, where, where are the children living? Uh, what about the grandchildren? What, what, what are we doing there? We're involved in our local church. We're involved in our communities. We want our businesses to be the best. We're trying to have a good testimony. And it's amazing we do not spend enough time cultivating the most important relationship God has given us, and that's the husband and wife relationship. Amen. We don't spend enough time. We take it for granted. And I'll tell you else, what else we take it for granted. We believe that sanctification and change works only when we're younger, but when we get in our marriage, we have no faith that God can change our partner at all. So is true with the Christian and the Savior's relationship. You've grown and you're in Christ. And uh, the fact is, uh, can I say that there's probably 10 to 15 men in this church that could go out and pastor a small church anywhere, maybe bigger one than that, without any problem. You have that kind of ability. You have, the, you have that kind of ability. Are you kidding? In this church, we've got ladies that can pastor a church. I thought I'd get more laughs there. Some of you are like, uh, a little tentative there. Um, our relationship with our Savior can become the same way. It can, became, it can become rote and nothing changes. Um, <clears throat> God doesn't want it that way. He doesn't want it that way. I encourage you about your relationship. <clears throat> and by the way, Adam allowed Eve to use her gifts and abilities. Just like Christ allows us to use our gifts and abilities for Him. It is the wife that reproduces. We're here as the bride of Christ to what? Reproduce. To be involved in carrying out the gospel. That's right. A wonderful picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this husband and wife relationship. Okay? Go back with me to Genesis 2, just for a moment. Let me read again where I started this morning. Verse 20, Genesis 2, 20. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to all the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. God, seeing that need, understanding that need, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I say to you, when you read that passage, I hope you'll never read it the same. That you understand we have a wonderful picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ here. A wonderful picture. May God bless his word to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, as we finish part two of this truth today. I just ask, Lord, that you would use it in our lives. I, I pray that you would help us to cultivate better relationship as husband and wife. I hope you would allow us to cultivate better relationships with Christ as his bride. Thank you for the picture we see. I wonder with heads bowed and eyes closed, are you here today? And I would ask you this question. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Have you ever been saved? Have you ever been born again? Has that ever happened to you? Do you have a desire that the Lord would save you today?
is that there. No one else is looking around, just between me, you, and God. If you're here and you say, Pastor Robert, I would like to know more about being born again. I, I don't know that I am. I, I would like to know that. Would you just slip up your hand for a moment and take it right back down? I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm concerned about it, but I would like to know that. Now, Lord Jesus, you understand our hearts, our lives. Thank you uh, for, for what you've done there. Thank you for who you are. And unto you be honor and glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me, please? Heads bowed, eyes closed. We'll have our benediction when the pianist is finished her benediction. You will be dismissed. Please remember, we'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm.